Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. Now, recently I started checking out Intel B560 motherboards in an effort to find the best value board for pairing with an 11th gen processor. A processor such as the Core i5-11400 or Core i7-11700 for example, as those CPUs represent pretty good value right now. Early on into that testing I found some massive performance discrepancies between boards and depending on their configuration, some were up to 50% faster than others when using a locked 65 watt part like the Core i7-11700. So I briefly stopped testing to dedicate a content piece that looked at the issue, an issue that I believe is entirely caused by Intel and their loosely defined specification, let's say. So that's less than ideal, and if you want to hear more about it, Tim and myself spent about an hour discussing uh, that and much more in a recent B560 discussion video. Anyway, after covering the Intel spec issue, I got back to testing at all the B560 boards that I had on hand. And once again, before too long, I had to stop and create yet another video. So this video. Now, when I made the B560 disaster video, the only entry level board that I tested was the MSI B560M Pro, which worked according to the Intel spec. It certainly wasn't a good board, but it technically worked. For example, it could run the Core i7-11700 comfortably at the TDP spec, but with the power limits removed, the board would thermal throttle. A disappointing discovery for sure, but it's also one of the cheapest B560 boards, so probably not a huge surprise. Interestingly, this budget MSI board did work better with the Core i5-11600K, as the 125 watt TDP appeared to be the sweet spot for this board. Without power limits, the Core i7-11700 pushes package power to a sustained 140 watts, which was simply too much for the VRM on the B560M Pro. 125 watts though was perfectly fine, and here the board's VRM peaked at 87 degrees, and was able to run the 11600K at a sustained 4.4 GHz all-core. Naively, I thought that would be about as bad as it gets for B560 motherboards, and it certainly is when talking about MSI B560 motherboards. Disappointingly though, as it turns out, the MSI B560M Pro is one of the best entry-level B560 offerings. And even more disappointing is the fact that there's a board that can't even meet the Intel minimum specification. So we're talking about false advertising here, misleading consumers, and well, just a flat out lie. Given that I'd already tested the MSI B560M Pro, it was only fair to MSI that I also tested similar offerings from their competition. And that meant purchasing the ASRock B560M HDV as ASRock banned us last year for honest reporting. And it also meant purchasing the ASUS Prime B560MK and Gigabyte B560M D2V. Recently, both Gigabyte and ASUS have been great with sample allocation, but when it came to these more affordable, these entry-level motherboards, getting a sample was all too hard. But anyway, not a problem. As you guys know, we'll just go out and buy them. And that's exactly what we've done here. With all three boards in hand, I began testing, and that's when we once again caught ASRock in a lie. Or at the very least being so lazy that it led them to deceiving customers, and well, we'll get to that in a moment. And before we get into all of those results, please just quickly note that I'm testing all of the boards in the Corsair 5000D, which has been configured with a single rear 120mm exhaust fan and a single 120mm intake fan, along with the H150i 360mm radiator installed on the top with three 120mm exhaust fans. For recording temperatures, I'm using a digital thermometer with K-type thermocouples, and I'll be reporting the peak PCB temperature. Finally, I'm not reporting Delta T over ambient, instead I maintain a room temperature of 21 degrees, and to ensure a consistent ambient temperature, a thermocouple is positioned next to the test system. Now first I began testing with the 65 watt Core i5-11400, and as expected, the ASRock B560M HDV ran at the 65 watt TDP spec, as did the Gigabyte B560M D2V, though interestingly the ASUS Prime B560M K went with a 125 watt limit out of the box. Now when compared to the MSI B560M Pro, voltage tuning for both the ASRock and Gigabyte boards are far more optimal, and as a result both clocked the 11400F much higher, 245 MHz higher in the case of ASRock, and a massive 450 MHz higher for Gigabyte, so a good result there for each board. Of course, neither board was anywhere near the frequencies that the 11400F runs at without any power limits, like what we see with more expensive boards such as the Gigabyte B560M Aorus Pro, for example. So, I removed the power limits, and this is where things started to get rather interesting. The ASUS Prime B560MK gained another 155 MHz, 
but hit 107 degrees for the VRM, so it was on the verge of VRM throttling. The Gigabyte B560MD2V was much better, jumping up to 4.2 GHz at just 79 degrees, so it was able to max out the 11400F while comfortably avoiding VRM throttling. The ASRock B550MHDV on the other hand ran a degree hotter but maxed out at 4 GHz with a sustained package power of 100 watts. Given the board's VRM was peaking at 80 degrees, I thought it would be possible to raise the power levels slightly higher in order to achieve the full 4.2 GHz. But at this point the board was already maxed out, 100 watts is as high as this board will go for the long duration turbo. It's not possible to adjust this limit using the Intel X2U software, in fact the software is locked out entirely so the only way to increase the power limit from 65 watts to 100 watts is in the BIOS. That means with the 11400F installed, the maximum power limit on the B560M HDV is 100 watts. And this isn't a huge issue for locked 6 core 12 thread processors as you're getting within 5% of the maximum all core frequency. So next up I tested using the 65 watt Core i7-11700 and again with the power limits maxed out, the same 100 watt limit was enforced on the ASRock B560M HDV. This meant the all-core frequency was limited to just shy of 3.7 GHz, which is the worst result I've received of any of the B560 boards that I've tested to date, and despite that the rear side of the PCB still peaked at 98 degrees. The ASUS Prime B560MK again ran with the 125 watt TDP limits in place, and this is out of the box behavior for this particular board, and that produced a decent result of 3.9 GHz, though the VRM was a blistering hot 107 degrees, and removing the power limits basically broke the board by invoking heavy VRM throttling. At this point I began to wonder what the ASRock board does with 125 watt parts. Does it even support them? So rather than just assume that the board detects a 125 watt CPU and adjusts the limits accordingly, I first went to the ASRock website and checked the CPU support list. Over on the official product page I went to the support tab, then clicked CPU support list, and to my surprise the Core i9-11900KF was at the top of the list with a power rating of 125 watts. So that settled it, the board must detect 125 watt parts and adjust the board limits. With that I installed the 125 watt Core i5-11600K, reset the BIOS to the defaults, then loaded XMP again, and then reloaded into the BIOS. Shockingly, what I found was the same hard 100 watt limit in the BIOS. Now, perhaps it was only possible to manually adjust the power limit to 100 watts, but the board would automatically go above that limit with a 125 watt CPU installed. So into Windows I went for some more benchmarking. And what I found was even worse than that. Forget the 100 watt firmware limit, the board didn't even run at that. Rather, it just pretended like the 11600K was a 65 watt locked processor. After a very brief PL2 period, the 11600K was dialed back to 65 watts, and this is where it all goes horribly wrong for ASRock and their B560M HDV, as the 11600K is no longer running within spec. Nowhere near it in fact. The 11600K has a base clock frequency of 3.9 GHz, and that means at no point should the CPU clock drop below this frequency, as that would be out of spec behavior. Well, at just 65 watts, the B560M HDV sustained a clock speed of just 3.4 GHz. That's 500 megahertz below the minimum specification and up to an entire one gigahertz lower than boards like the Gigabyte B560MD2V. This means even for short burst workloads like a single pass of Cinebench R23, the Gigabyte B560MD2V was 25% faster than the ASRock B560MHDV and a little over 30% faster for sustained all core workloads. But more crucially, it means ASRock's falsely advertising the B560M HDV as supporting 125 watt processors when it simply doesn't. Even with the power limits removed, which sees the ASRock board capped at 100 watts, it only just managed to average the 3.9 GHz base frequency, but even so ran out of spec due to VRM throttling, which consistently saw the operating frequency drop down to 800 MHz. The Gigabyte B560M D2V also suffered from VRM throttling with the power limits removed, but Stockett ran the board at the 125 watt TDP with a peak VRM temperature of 89 degrees, and here it sustained a clock frequency of 4.5 GHz, so well above the minimum specification set by Intel. Of course, we are only talking about the 11600K here, 
The 8-core 16-thread 125-watt parts are also listed on the ASRock CPU support page for the B560 MHDV, and well, they require even more power to function correctly. I didn't go back and run the Cinebench R23 benchmark using the 11900K, as that's not really the focus of the B560 Verum thermal testing, but I do have the temperature and frequency results using the Core i9 processor. Again, out of the box, the B560M HDV runs the 11900K at the 65 watt TDP, which results in a clock frequency of just 3.1 GHz, so 400 MHz below the minimum specification. Now, maxing the board out to the 100 watt limit does see the average clock speed reach the minimum specification, but again, due to consistent CPU throttling down to 800 MHz, the end result is out of spec behavior. The Gigabyte B560M D2V also fails this test, and although it does attempt to run at the 125 watt TDP spec, it failed our hour long blender stress test, falling out of spec, and therefore it can't support the 11900K, despite the product page claiming that it does. It was possible to manually tune the power target to 110 watts, which did see the CPU run within spec, but it's still a fail out of the box and a black eye for Gigabyte. The ASUS Prime B560MK ran hot as hell, but somehow avoided throttling, though there was some kind of power limits coming into play as maxing out the power targets didn't change the behavior of the board, limiting the frequency to just 3.8 gigahertz, a massive 900 megahertz below what we should see under these conditions. So in short, all of these entry-level B560 motherboards are a bit garbage and probably should be avoided. Uh, ASRock in particular takes things to the next level by advertising support for 125 watt CPUs on the B560 MHDV while running them at just 65 watts out of the box and then limiting the manual tuning to just 100 watts and this ultimately sees 125 watt CPUs run well out of spec and is therefore false advertising. There are no two ways about it. ASRock's lying to their customers when they claim that the board supports Intel CPUs like the 11600K at 125 watts with the, well, the base frequency of 3.9 gigahertz, as it certainly can't achieve that. It might have been a mistake to list 125 watt parts in the CPU support list, but right now the product page is deceptive and, as I've said, false advertising. Quite troubling for ASRock is the fact that they're not able to simply issue a BIOS update to correct the power limits. And they can certainly improve it, but getting within the minimum Intel specification won't be possible given the VRM temperatures and throttling that we observed in our testing. The board's VRM simply isn't capable of delivering enough power to higher rated parts. Gigabyte could also find themselves in a bit of hot water over the claim that the B560M D2V supports 125 watt 8 core processors because it really doesn't. For gaming or very short burst all core workloads, it'll be fine. But if you run an all-core workload for an extended period of time, it will run out of spec. So that's less than ideal, but ASRock has somewhat let Gigabyte off the hook here as their board makes no attempt to run within spec. So how could ASRock have avoided this, apart from, you know, not making an absolute trash heap of a motherboard to begin with? The obvious solution would be to call the board the B560M HDV 65W and make it very clear on the product page that this is a 65 watt board and of course not list support for 125 watt processors. The board could still run with those parts and limit them to 65 watts as it currently does, but just don't advertise support as I've said. So making it clear that it's intended only to support 65 watt CPUs is the obvious solution here, and at the very least is what ASRock should have done when these things went on sale many months ago now. Now, for anyone who might say something like, the board only costs $80 US, it doesn't include VRM heatsinks, so of course it's gonna be garbage. Well, you've missed the point entirely. It doesn't matter how cheap the board is or how garbage it might appear on the surface, ASRock advertises it to support CPUs that it simply doesn't. You cannot run the 11600K at 3.4 gigahertz out of the box, that's out of spec behavior and therefore false advertising. As a tech enthusiast who watches tech channels, you're no doubt quite well informed regarding stuff like VRM performance and have a pretty good idea of how little you can get away with spending on a motherboard. But this isn't true for most users, even those who build their own PCs. Now, you could blame them for not doing enough research, or you could do the right thing and blame companies like ASRock for either taking advantage or being too lazy to get it right. Either way, at the end of the day, this is entirely on ASRock and not the unsuspecting customer. And this isn't a low volume product either. In fact, it's currently out of stock everywhere I checked. So I was quite lucky to get one. 
I guess, depending on how you look at it. Anyway, the entire point of this product is to lure in the bulk of the market who try to spend as little as possible on their motherboard, allowing them to dump more cash into components such as the graphics card. ASRock knows this, and this is why they're doing their absolute best to deliver the cheapest B560 motherboard possible. On that note, if you're after the cheapest B560 motherboard possible and only care to pair it with a 6-core processor like the 11400 or even up to the 11600K, then I recommend the MSI B560M Pro, which currently costs $105 US. But be aware, if you spend $140 US on a board like the MSI B560M Bazooka, you are getting a significantly better product that will allow you to upgrade to an 8-core processor in the future. Of course, I will have our full B560 Varum Thermal test video ready for you shortly, I promise. But I felt it was important to first address ASRock's false advertising of the B560M HDV, as we really want to stamp out this kind of anti-consumer behavior. Finally, if ASRock does decide to clean up their product pages, they'll also want to look at their H510 range as well, as boards with similar or even worse VRMs also list support for 125 watt CPUs. Anyway, that is going to do it for this one. If you appreciate this kind of testing, where we buy garbage motherboards like this, then you can support our efforts over at Patreon or Floatplane. Either of those will give you access to our exclusive Discord server, monthly live streams with Tim and myself, Q&As, behind the scenes videos, a lot of cool stuff there. So yeah, if you're interested, do check out those links in the video description. If not perfectly fine, I would like to just thank you for watching this video. I'm your host, Steve, and I'll see you again next time.